in my one of my rooms. Okay. Seems like you got everything rocking. I hope so. I would imagine you did. And then um, we just have to provide the poster shot if you have um, posted materials um, to share on schedule to do so. Yeah. And after that, um, like, it doesn't take links, it's crazy. Yeah, well, there's ways around that. But yeah. We have to just put it on. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Got your dongle, you're set. Yeah. Good deal. Have a great session. Thank you. <clears throat> Set in there, motion protected lights. So anytime you go in there, yeah. all right. So, my name is Adam Vidomsky, and uh, this is using gamification. Why settle for skis when you can ride a snowmobile? So, before I even get into the presentation, uh, I've attended a couple of these different conferences, and the ones that I remember are the ones that give me something to take home. and. 
Um, so what I have for you is I have a bunch of some things to take home, but I have a physical thing to give you so that you can be immersed into the presentation a little bit better. Now, I have some reservations with this, so I, I'm not gonna, I have pennies, um, and I will let you use them, but I don't want you taking those home, okay? Uh, what I do have is I have scratch off cards for you. So um, the first thing I did, if you don't want it, you don't have to take it, um, but what it is, is, because I know you're gonna get you know, so much mileage when I give you extra points for your assignments. Um, but they are scratch off cards. And if, like some of my students, what they just peel the sticker off. <laughs> but, you know, uh, if you do need a penny, I do have pennies. Just let me know. I only have 30 of them. Yeah. <laughs> But this is uh, one of the ways that in my classroom, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is one of the ways in my classroom, actually on the very first day, I wanted to get them immersed into the, uh, into the game. And what I ended up doing is I made these and I passed these out. And what they do is they actually, um, they give it here. I'll, I'll uh -huh. but what they do is let, all right, everybody get one. Somebody came in, okay. All right, and so you will get a template for these. Does anybody need a penny? I need a penny. You need a penny, okay. Um, Is it really scratched off? It really scratched off, yeah. So, you're, I, I wish I had prizes to give you, but I'm, I'm a teacher. <laughs> so, um, well, well, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. But what these are is, I, I actually give these to my students, right? And uh, the very first day, they're all right, all right, someone's up with this, right? You already got cooked, like hooked. Anybody get a, another scratch card card? Do you want another scratch card? Okay, I think I'm going to start taking those out because it's just a waste of a card at this point. <laughs> but, um, but that is something that I do. All right, so we will continue. I'll talk more about those in a minute, well, in a bit. All right, so my name is Adam Vodomsky. Um I have a master's, and I'm an eighth grade English teacher at Prince George County. Uh, schools, not to be confused with Prince George's County in Maryland. Mine's by Petersburg near Richmond, not Maryland. Um, all of my information is uh, on on my. Uh, I already have a thing in uh, Sketch. My presentation, you can download it, and you're going to get everything. With you're going to get everything that we're going to talk about in here today. All right, so I'm an exennial. Uh, I collect and I have a collection of over 800 records. Um, an exennial is a micro generation born during the cusp years of Generation Xers and Millennials, right? Uh, it was between 1977 or 83 for those, the original Star Wars years, right? Uh, we experienced an analog childhood and a digital adulthood. And we possess uh, both Generation X's cynicism and Millennials' optimism and drive. <laughs> so, um, my desire to present was born from working with at various schools and seeing the juxtaposition uh, of my analog childhood and my digital adulthood, uh, and it left me in a unique with a unique knowledge, and I could no longer stay quiet about it. So, uh, basically, I, I thought. Um, I thought everybody was as tech savvy as I was when I started teaching. I'm, I'm a late, I guess, a late bloomer when it came to teaching. I did a bunch of other stuff and then I started teaching after that. Um, and I thought everybody knew all this stuff about technology. And then I started teaching and I started talking to other people and I learned that a lot of them don't. So um, 
I am also a vicarious video gamer, the concept, but honestly, I don't have a lot of time to just spend playing video games, right? I'll leave that to my son or somebody, right? All right, so using gamification, uh, out of 114 students surveyed, 111 spend some time playing some sort of game each day. That means that out of my classes, 97% of my students play games. I wonder and I wish there was a way to motivate 97% of my students to complete their work and to participate in my class. There is. Uh, it's called gamification, right? So, um, understanding or uh, the, the purpose and the goal is for you today is to walk out with a basic understanding of gamification and the resources available. Not all, but enough resources, right? To have a better understanding of how to implement gamification and gamified teaching into your classroom, right? When we think about, and I could, we could debate this, but I think that a snowmobile gets you somewhere a lot faster than somebody with skis, right? And so when teaching, we look at, um, I, I want to make the most impact the best, the mostest, right? There you go. Um, this is a uh, tweet from Alice Keeler. I don't know if you know her, but um, in video games, we use data to motivate players. And in schools, we use data to make kids feel dumb, right? And so I would like to make and use gamification as to sort of bridge that gap and to help them to be motivated and to actually like school. All right, so there are many ways to apply gamification in our lives and to our students' lives. And this is how I do it. Uh, it is not perfect for everyone. In fact, this may not be the best way to gamify, right? It shows how it is how I gamify. It is what works best for me and my students. I love to play it every year, and uh, it is a work in progress. I don't think one year I've had the same sort of game at, at all, right? I mean, there's certain aspects that are the same, but each year I try to try to change it up. Uh, in the words of Chris Alves, uh, if you like what you hear or read, steal it. I hope, however, that you will eventually make it your own system uh, from an, a mag uh, maglamation or other uh, of other systems, best practices, and your own style. So basically, put your spin on what you've learned what you know, what you already do. All right, so gamification, what is it? Uh, it is the use of game mechanics and elements in non-game contexts, right? That is probably the most general, most broad um, definition of it, right? It's taking game mechanics and putting it into non-game context or using it. And in reality, uh, we do it a lot. We have a lot, and um, it's been done for years. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So we have American Airlines, the AA Advantage, right? Uh, it's the first frequent flyer miles. It was in 1981, right? That is a game context, or excuse me, a game element that's put into a non-game context. Uh, Acorn app. It's a financial investing, uh, investing app that uses some sort of gamification. There's Zombies Run, right? I, have, I still have it. I, I don't pay for it anymore, but I, um, basically it's, it's exercise and it has elements, levels, and you're running from zombies, right? That's game elements put into a non-game context. Uber gets you from here to there, right? All right, and so the very first thing that I can think about that is not a game context was actually the Boy Scouts. I was a Boy Scout and I kept thinking about it. I was like, you know what? You get merit badges, you go, you do these things, you got levels, ranks, mm -hmm. right? You move up, that's, that's all game elements, right? We are surrounded by games and we just don't look at them like that. So um, I looked this up, the Chore Wars down there. I've never used that, it you looks like, it. Say what? Okay, so, but from what I understand about it, uh, it has, it, basically you, it, they take chores out of game, 
they make it in game. Right? I have my own version, the good game, as my son calls it. I have a seven-year-old, and he moves up. And I made that. It's not Legos, and he moves up when he does certain things, and he gets certain spaces for certain things that he does. And every time you look at it, you see the uh, the blue and then the yellow markers. Every time he gets to one of those, that's where he gets a toy or some sort of something, right? Starbucks has that. Um, they have elements to, um, to theirs, all right? All these products use some sort of, or all of these things, badges, leaderboards, points, or purchase-based rewards, social interactions and sharing, uh, stories and choose your own adventure plots, survey incentives, right? Those are all game-based things in non-game context. So, gamification techniques strive to leverage people's natural desires for socializing, learning, mastery, competition, achievement, status, self-expression, altruism, or closure. Gamification strategies include use of rewards for players who accomplish desired tasks or competition to engage players. Types of rewards include points, achievements, badges, or levels, the filling of a progress bar, providing the user with virtual currency, making the rewards for accomplishing tasks visible to other players, or providing leaderboards or further ways of encouraging players to compete. Okay? That's literally what gamification is. That is the big, deep definition. I mean, there's others too, but. All right. So it is 12. All right. Uh, the birth of social video games. Roy Trubshaw and Richard Bartley developed MUD1, the first multi user dungeon game. Uh, through its text-based interface was unimpressive, or excuse me, though its text-based interface was unimpressive by today's standards, it lit the fuse uh, for the explosion of social online games, right? In 1996, game players are categorized. Richard Bartley, right? Uh, he's one of those guys that did the social video games. He finds four game gamer types based on how different people approach playing a game. Uh, this model would go on to let me move that so I can actually see it. Um, become a cornerstone of many gamification initiations, right? Uh, so that is a little bit of history, and let's do that. All right. So if gamification is the use of game mechanics and elements in non-game context then using gamification in the classroom is taking the game mechanics and elements that kids love about games, video games, and installing them into your classroom. I'll say that again, because that was a lot. All right, if gamification is the use of game mechanics and elements in non-game contexts, then using gamification in the classroom is taking the game mechanics and elements that kids love about games and video games and installing them into your classroom. So that, in short, taking those things that kids love about video games and games and putting them into your classroom is gamification, right? All right. Your classroom doesn't use video games. Your classroom is the video game. Right? Your students are the players, and you are the game master. All right. So I'm not getting paid by them. I am familiar with them. I know they've, they've, they've done presentations in the past here. Um, but uh, as it stands right now, uh, I, I do use them. I don't use them to the full extent that they want me to use them. Uh, but Classcraft is a way to track points with uh, in your classes, right? And they, and, and, uh, they, they work great if you know how to do it and you do it how you do it, right? So um, I want to show you a couple of ways that they do it. This is, uh, granted, this is a paid version. Um, you can use the free version, but uh, basically 
Um, this is some of the stuff that you have class tools um, outside of, maybe I should do that one first. So you have, they create an avatar and you go in there and you track points. You have experience points, you have gold points, crystals, health, all of that stuff. Um, they switch it up this year to be a little bit different, but basically your students earn points. They gain points and different points do different things. I, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but if you have any questions or comments about anything, feel free to, to just ask because that way I know that you're learning and I'm doing a good job of teaching, right? All right. Um, so that is that is basically Classcraft. Um, one thing I want to point out, they, they also have a, a team section. Um, one thing that I've done is I have uh, a couple of cards that where because they're in teams, they make the name of their team and then they have it where it's called a hacker. And what they do is they go in and they can go in uh, and change the name of another team, right? If you want to, uh, I also have a card to change, it's called misnomer, and you change the name of your team back to whatever you so desire, right? But it costs points, right? It's trying to, it's taking the non-game context of classroom management or non-game context of of anything of, of of school right and, and putting game context into it all right they also have quest where basically they give assignments and they go and they walk through it and then once they get done they get points experience points for it things like that right uh, it is very robust and I appreciate it I would make tweaks to it and um, I've actually talked to some people about uh, coming up with a program that is similar to it, but is not it. Uh, some of the stuff that I have, it, it is a little kind of World of Warcrafty, and some students don't buy into that, right? So I want something that I have more buy-in, but has a lot of the same elements that are in it. So in that quest, I have gone in and I have made certain uh, certain things that are like that, my own versions, and you all will have them or you might already have them in your when you download the presentation. Uh, some things I want to talk about though are items. Okay, so in my class, I have uh, I have items that I have set up and I've used. Um, there is this place, Magic the Gathering. It was a thing. I imagine it still is a thing. It is a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Uh, what they do is they have a, a Magic the Gathering cardsmith where you can make cards. Well, I've taken that format and I've made my own cards to play with them, right, in the game. And I have taken them and I've blown them up so that I put them in my classroom so they know. And I have put a price on that card so that they know how much it costs. I've kind of taken the technology out of it. I used to have it on a website, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but it's things have changed and this year I decided that I wanted to make big actual cards for it, right so uh, some of the things that you can get are like you have the hacker um, you have well I'll talk about that in a little bit you, they come in the Chromebooks not charged the phone's not charged you can charge it in my class but it's gonna cost you points so they I so, got that one yeah so they um <laughs> Like it, it kind of makes it. Oh, you got charge that. phone. Yeah. One day. Pass. Yeah. So right. they they can go ahead and use that, right? Uh, they like to listen to headphones. I have uh, zombie headphones. This is it costs 125. You get three of these, and I keep them and attract them in my uh, on something I'll show you in a in a minute. But basically, you get three passes for three different days. And, I go in there and they're like, all right, can I buy that? Yep. And I go in and I just delete, you know, because I give them three, I delete one for each day, right? Um, I'll go over that a little bit. This one is, uh, and I just unveiled this one. I don't know, I'm still trying to figure out how this is going to work, but it's like an instant power up and it gets them more points. 
uh, more gold points, and also XP, which is experience points. Um, this one is basically you can go in, you can steal from another, like another player. You can go ahead and steal theirs. Uh, this one is pass the buck. Basically, I call in class. You don't want to give me the answer. You can play this. And basically, somebody else, you can pick whoever else is going to have to do it. Uh, this is an event wizard. Basically, what that is, is a random event. That's something that's in class graph that uh, it's crazy. Like, we have talk like a pirate. Now everybody in the class has to talk, up, talk <laughs> like a pirate. Um, there's also, I mean, the, like, the, oh, I, this happened, like, literally last week. Uh, I played it, and I had to sing a song that they chose. <laughs> Oh. And I'm probably going to delete that one. <laughs> I don't, like, yeah, it surprised me. Um, this one is the Brain Breaker. So you can buy this card if you need a brain break. As long as, um, in, you know, just as long as one hasn't been played already. Uh, this one right here is the Leave Me Alone Pass. This <laughs> is, well, this, this is only good for once a quarter. And the reason why is because uh, they play it. They don't do anything, they put their head down, they can do what they're gonna do for the class. But you know, if they have assignments due, they're still responsible for it. They just don't do it in class. Uh, we have a green zone. The green zone is uh, when you can use your phone and whatnot, you can buy a pass, but the caveat is you have to be done with your assignments, right? Um, for the day. Um, so I have I've, I'll, I'll just give you an example. At the beginning of the year, when I didn't have a system set up, or, or I was still setting up what I what I have, uh, like one person would raise their hand to go to the bathroom, and then like you know, 15 other kids would want to go to the bathroom as well. And so it's hard to track that. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, I wanted to eliminate that. And so I tried to figure out a way to do that. Um, so I created a bathroom pass where. I give, and, and this this could go, this is, you gotta fill your classes out for this. They got mad at me and I actually gave them more, but I gave them, uh, originally I gave them five bathroom, like times to go to the bathroom per quarter, and then I upped it to eight. And so to incentivize them, what I ended up doing is, um, I actually went out and bought a little hole punch, I mean itty bitty, and uh, they, they get it, and then I've given them opportunity to buy more, so this is what, this is not the bathroom pass. This is, well, this is the physical card that I made. But um, I also have one in there where if you need more times to go to the bathroom, you can buy it. It's not, you know, too expensive. But what, what this did is it eliminated the 15 other people that had to go to the bathroom, right? So it said, okay. And then I incentivized it more by saying, if at the end of the quarter you have half of them done, so four or less, I will give you 200 gold points instantly. And so at the end of every quarter, like last quarter, or when this quarter started, I said, all right, show me your bathroom pass with four or less uh, hole punches, and I'll give you 200 gold points. And I mean, people, they, they don't go to the bathroom on purpose. Like, I'll let them go before class, you know, and, and, and they do. Most of them come in, I gotta go to the bathroom, I go to the bathroom. Yeah, sure. So, so that's that, right? I'm not trying to penalize them, but I am trying to cut down on the amount of people going to the bathroom. All right. Um, I also have the scratch. Well, I'll get to you. All right. Um, I, they can eat in class. They can buy another. Yeah, there is that. They can buy a scratch card, um, and that that's kind of good too because it's less than buying, say, going to uh, using your headphones, right? It's only I think it's only seventy five. Uh, gold pieces, and so what ends up happening is they can get that, they get the card, they scratch it off, but it's kind of, it's a chance card, because basically they don't know exactly what they're going to get, right? All right, um, so then I also have built in some rewards, right? Uh, so some of the rewards, and this is where, well, so I had a, I had a, I had a class that, um, how do I explain this? Uh, they, so this one class is kind of like a, it's not counted, it doesn't count as a grade, right? And so it's hard to, it's hard to get them 
to be invested in, in the class, right? And I don't have anything to really hold over them. Not, not that you want to hold anything over them, but sometimes when they're rowdy, you, you, you need them to come back. So I had set this up when I did this. And I tried doing it, and I couldn't get it. And for weeks, months, I couldn't, you know, they're still, I couldn't, I just couldn't get them. They weren't really buying into the game because they're like, well, this doesn't count as a grade, so what's the point, right? And so finally, I uh, figured out what this cool thing is, uh, what they really wanted, and they're called clout goggles, right? I, I don't know. I, I really, I don't get it. But, um, you know, one year it's fidget spinners, this year it's this, right? And so I went out, and I probably have about 30 or 40 pairs of clout goggles now, and they cost 700 gold points, right? But I, I like, I, I, I kid you not, I, when I when I told them about it, like everybody just okay, we'll stop, right? They they they, they stopped talking and they they did they did basically what I wanted, um, and 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 then like I had to I had to order more. I didn't have you know the amount that I do now. I had to order more because everybody in the class wanted it there, and I said okay. Um, for years, I've done. Uh, now this is my personal collection, but I, I make stickers, and you can buy stickers, right? Two hundred and fifty uh, plus, depending on the size. My move for the day, right? Uh, so you can do stickers. Um, I've also, uh, when Among Us became big, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna brag on myself. You cannot buy these in a store. They do not make these. I made these, <laughs> right? Like these are a hundred percent, well, most of them genuine Lego. Um, but I, I went in and I made these. I figured out how to do it, and I bought the pieces to do it, and I've made them. Then some of them are different. Um, I also have little baby Yodas, right? Little baby Yoda. I have, for whatever reason, I got a weird kick where uh, I all black monochromatic Legos. So I did that. Um, like that's just a, I don't know, tan one. So I've got I've got a bunch of a bunch of those. Um, I got like all black Batman, all black Darth Vader. And then I got you know all black with a red mohawk. I got all white Batman. So <laughs> I mean, so there's so there's different things, right? You want to you want to try to incentivize them, okay? Mm -hmm. um, what am I doing on time? All right. So uh, we have those. Those are rewards. All right. So then this, and as you can see, it says click on the picture for a link. This is a copy of my badge boards, right? Basically, how it works is uh, I have my student's name, and then I have what they, you know, their items or their rewards. Usually, the rewards they I just give them. I don't actually have a card made up for it, but. I have that in there. So, like, oh, oh I did the bad thing here. Um, all right. So, um, that's my badge board, right? All right. This is what I have, and this is what I have at the bottom of each class. So I just make copies, wonderful thing about Google, you make copies of it, and each year, and then I have this posted in Google Classroom. Uh, I can also have it posted or just showing on a website if you want. Um, and, and these are different things that they can buy. This one right here, you see my cursor? Yeah, that one right there is extra bathroom passes, you buy that. Um, currently, we don't allow them to use wear hats in school. That's a controversial thing. Um, but I have had a hat pass. Uh, I can have an eating class, drinking class, but it's all linked to the to the to the game, right? They earn it, they buy it, they have it. All right. So where I talked about uh, class craft and how it keeps track of points, right? It took me a long time, but I came up with this is just a spreadsheet, basically. Um, and the, the limitation to this is it's only 30, 30 students. So if you have more than 30 students, I mean, I can make it more, but it's very time consuming to do. Um, but 
you, one of the things about Google is you can just have two of them, three of them, five of them, you know? So you just make copies of it. And literally, what it does is it'll go in there and you have the student's name and it keeps track of their points. Their totals will be right here. And you could add one point, add five, 10, see how it goes, all the way up to 500 instantly. All right, that's just programming and the app development in the background. Okay. And all right. it's asking you to request access to it. All right, I'll go in there and change that to see what we can do. It, is it the uh, gold tracker one? Okay. All right. All right, I'll go in there after it's it. Okay. All right. All right. So this is um, this is an old website that I have. Let me. I'm afraid to hit that. Oh no, it didn't work. Okay. All right. So this is actually this is actually an old website that I had. Um, I made a video. It's not it doesn't sync, right? So I mean, just know that when you listen to it. Um, and this is the. Uh, I mean, this is from. I don't know. It's a, it's a few years old. Uh, and then I had a slideshow. Um, and then this is actually uh, another one that you guys are going to have access to. Think, um, but uh, but that was another ranking system that I had. Um, and then you have so remember we were talking about player types earlier. The the Bartley went in and he made trying to figure out what type of players everybody was. Um, basically, you have four different ones. You have the achievers, right? And then you have explorers, and then you have the diplomats, and you have provokers. These are other known as grifters or warriors. Right, um, and then this is in there uh, because it went to another school. I don't know if I have access to change it, but I can make a new one. And I mean, it uses autocrat. So basically, you take it, ask you a bunch of questions, and then you can go in and it'll spit back an email to you with saying you were this type of player and your second is this type of player. All right, um, this is a leaderboard. That loads. That's a leaderboard. Um, then this was an item shop that I had at one point with other types of cards. Some some of them are still in there. Some of them aren't. Um, and then I had my badge boards for each each class. Um, like I said, this is this is older. Um, but gamifications, you can take it. You can put it into a website. And they can they can basically come in, they can see it, they can keep track of it, right? Um, what else? All right. So this is where I I have created what I call the gamification super doc, right? And this thing uh, it is it is extremely large, right? Um, it has I mean it's probably like three or four pages. It has um, yeah, here is the actual live document. Are you able to get into that? Yes. All right. All right. So uh, Michael Montera, he actually uh, I've read his book. He does a lot. I don't know if you follow people on Twitter. He's somebody that uh, is big into gamification. Um, I have linked on here a couple of his uh, his websites. Um, I also have uh, a blog post by Alice Keeter, uh, Keeler, talking about uh, creating badges and using Google Sheets. Um, and then I have uh, some other stuff. Um, Chris Alves, I quoted him in the beginning. He talks about a lot of uh, the theory behind gamification and how people are motivated. Um, and then he's got what's called uh, the gamification guide. And if you are really interested in some sort of tracker, uh, like you get his guide from his from his uh, site, and then you look through his guide, and all of a sudden you see a link to his tracker, right? His XP tracker, his his points tracker. Um, I just outright blatantly 
do that, give it to you. But uh, but basically, um, you go in there and you do that. I've also linked on there the uh, cards where you can make the cards. And if you would like, uh, mine is A. Vodomsky. You can look to see of some of the cards that I have. I'm also following a bunch of people. Um, the one thing I will say about that is the counts are weird. And so sometimes counts are there and then sometimes they disappear. I, I think it's like frequency of use type of stuff. Um, Adam Powley is a, another person who is uh, really, really big into gamification. I've seen uh, different podcasts and different um, like videos with him. Give your hand raise. Yeah, no, sorry. Okay. Um, and then I have a site for him and Andrew. Ooh, I'm not going to try and. Cause, cause, yeah, that guy. Sorry if he's even because I think he's in Maryland. Um, anyways, he I, that's a site for him. And then an uh, article about Bartley's four player types talks about that. And then I have some people to connect to uh, on on Twitter and some books. I'm not going to be honest. I haven't read all of those books. I have read the multiplayer classroom, though. Um, and then Adam Pauly, like like he said, he, um, or Pauly, he, he's got a lot of good stuff. And I follow him and, and, and I actually use some of his, which I need to go back and show you. But um, I, I use some of his stuff. Um, let's see, what else? And then you have copies of the stuff that I have, right? And stuff that, that I've that I've made and, and used and tweaked and made my own, right? Um, there's the, the game site. Let's see. See if, uh, see if, click on the, on this, my XP gold health AP tracker. Click on that and see if that still does the same. It does? Yeah. All right, hold on. All right, I'll do that. Let's see. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll mess with that after. We'll, we'll get that straight. All right, so then we have, um, so then we have this right here, right? We have the, uh, this is my version of Adam Powley's. Uh, so last year I wanted to make it because it was virtual and I taught strictly virtual and I, I wanted to make it, um, I don't know. I just I, I wanted them to have their own individual little board, their own little um, kind of like report card where they were in the game, right? Um, and so basically, what I did was I went in and um, I went in and I created this. That was the name of the game. They have this right here. Their snaky fingers was uh, their group name. This is actually my son's avatar. This is my son's little thing. He really liked Ninja Turtles and. Uh, the problem that that really became the problem was the avatar like i had to go in because of the way it was uh I, I had to manually modify all of them and so when i came in this year i didn't want to it took a lot of time to do it and i didn't want to dedicate that much time to it right so this is just me being a little bit of a nerd but um so basically the uh it has their their gold or their health and then their gold points and then their xp right here this is the back end of it um, but they see this in, then they uh, you input the information on this, one, right? All right. Um, so what I've done is I have a um, filled out a, to receive, like, because I know it can be difficult, and I haven't uh, made instructions yet. So if you are interested in that tracker, I um, or any of it, just let me know and fill this out and let me know what you're interested in and I can email you and get you uh, what you need. <coughs> so um, I'm not a teacher because someone shamed me into doing it. So I am not going to teach like I was. The more that I think about why I decided to teach, the more I feel I was chosen to fulfill this calling. I'm a teacher because I chose to take on the responsibility of educating others. Come what may, I am called to the greatest pursuit. I believe in being kind, loving, 
and I am willing to change what I need to change to improve my students' success. This all comes full circle back to respect. I respect myself and I respect my students. Um, you all have just leveled up. You go, <laughs> and here's your badge, and have it. All right. Um, if there's any questions, that's my Twitter and that's my email. That's it. Does anybody have any questions about anything? Yeah. I do. So I, I figured out how you do the XP and the gold. But what is the help? How do you do the help? So okay, and this is where it it starts to. So at certain points, when I when I would play and I would have um, like like the goal, right? You have to be at ninety percent health in order to be able to get this privilege. So health would be, yes. uh, and, and, and depending on the year, health is, is sort of like what classroom management is. Like, okay, you've lost points in health, and therefore, like, um, basically. Oh, I forgot to do that. So I have this is a lot of which one is this? This is for XP and gold. And this is like the bad stuff that you lose points in health. Yeah. This year I've kind of changed it. And the health is now I just I'm gonna hit you financially. Mm -hmm. So so it, it goes like that. I mean there there is uh, some people have done it where they basically when because they have boss battles where basically they have uh like a test and they need help and they need certain items in order to help them over or have some sort of advantage overcome and so the more health you have the more like basically the more life you have and uh when the boss strikes you get a question wrong you lose health in the boss battle it, it really it's um because i, I use class craft this year and in there, they change it up. And so health, I, I don't use health like I used to use health. I used to use health like that, like what I just said. But this is not as, uh, way I use. I don't use health like I used to, basically. Um, Did you ever have a kid go to zero health? Yeah. Mm. But, then there's, there, but there's a, uh, basically, they go to zero, but really they go to one. And then they have to do some sort of something to, you know, like write an apology letter to the class for doing whatever, right? Or, or sometimes I, you know, sing I'm a little teapot or something. As, as long as, you know, the whole thing is, is the buy-in. And once you get the buy-in, that's really where it comes down to. Anybody else have any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.